Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site, RichardDwyer.com. Right now, things are unbalanced in the National Football League. The press, inadvertently perhaps, perhaps to ingratiate themselves to a cash cow sport, the National Football League has been misreporting, simply misstating what's going on with Colin Kaepernick as well as what's going on with Miles Garrett. Right? Just understand the following. The NFL players are unionized. They're union members. Under the NFL Players Association. Understand the league and the Players Association negotiated a collective bargaining agreement that actually allows the players to kneel during the National Anthem. Right folks, the issue isn't one of patriotism. These workers have negotiated the right to kneel during the National Anthem. Right, the league negotiators dotted a lot of I's and crossed a lot of T's, but left open the possibility in the agreement that the players could kneel during the National Anthem. So whatever you or I think as patriots, Colin Kaepernick and other players who are kneeling are merely expressing their bargained contractual right to kneel during the National Anthem, right? For whatever personal reason they have, they have negotiated and have obtained the right to kneel during the National Anthem. So teams who've already given the players this right through a bargained negotiation should not be punishing players for exercising this contractual right. Certainly, these teams should not be excluding players for exercising their bargained for contractual rights. Right? This is as ridiculous to me as if a player has a contractual right to a bonus, exercises that right, and then gets blackballed. Let me also say, too, the league shouldn't have been giving Kaepernick an opportunity to work out with a short deadline, telling him, hey, it's a take it or leave it. You agree in a matter of hours to this proposal, or we're going to pull it off the table. Folks, as anyone, and I encourage you, to leave your comments in the comment section of this video. If anyone here is or has been a union member in a union shop, you understand that the league should have been talking to the union. Kaepernick shouldn't be out there negotiating by himself, having the league do dumb things, and they're dumb like asking him to sign a waiver. Let me also point out, too, I know there's a lot of talk out there about, oh, should Kaepernick have signed the waiver? I'm an attorney. I can tell you I would never have my client sign a waiver. Sign a waiver under these circumstances. Understand the league's already settled Kaepernick's prior claims. They left open they left open in the settlement, according to Mike Florio. They left open in the settlement the possibility that Kaepernick could sue them in the future if they continued to blackball him. So understand, the league shouldn't be giving any member of the union nonsensical offers that call for the execution of waivers and agreements within a matter of hours, right? 
when Kaepernick hasn't played for 32 months? What's the rush now? Not only that, the tryout was supposed to be on a Saturday. I was trying to monitor the tryout. I, I got to tell you, I woke up Saturday morning, I was watching college football. It was then it dawned on me, oh, you know what? Cap's working out today. Let me find out what's happening on that story. And I'm someone who was interested in the story. Right? The league should have been talking to the union. Demaris Smith, earn your money. The union should have said, this is a crackpot idea. You and I already know we have this contractual right to kneel during the national anthem. If you want Colin Kaepernick to hold a workout, then we have to agree to the ground rules. Union attorneys should be earning their job, negotiating something that's reasonable. Right here, it's clear to me, it's clear to me, that the NFL tried to be heavy-handed. It's clear to me they tried to deny Kaepernick an opportunity to talk with union members, to negotiate something that made sense, to negotiate a tryout that didn't take place when teams were traveling to their next game, when head coaches justifiably would be with their teams preparing for Sunday games and not at some workout. Right? So, just to understand, the Kaepernick situation is misreported. There's some pundits I respect gratefully, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful for, right? Stephen A. Smith from Hollis, Queens, out in my neck of the woods, right? Saying Kaepernick doesn't want to play in the NFL and stuff like that. Why would you say that? When Kaepernick has just been exercising his bargain for rights under the collective bargaining agreement. Why would you say that? When after 32 months, Kaepernick is still in NFL playing shape and still has his fastball, according to one NFL scout who attended the workout. Right, so the Kaepernick situation is a dog and pony show. But understand, Kaepernick's not at fault. If anyone is at fault, it's the league for coming out with ridiculous rules. Understand, if you're going to break protocol and suddenly have a workout on short notice for one player and invite team personnel in a situation as high profile as the Kaepernick situation, why would you not allow the press who was to attend the workout, to be close to the workout. Why would you deny the opportunity for cameras? Especially when, in this league, where we're seeing countless backups, where perennial pro bowlers like Ben Roethlisberger and Drew Brees were injured this year, and we're seeing no-name guys, Super Bowl winning quarterback Joe Flacco injured this year, and we're seeing no-name guys actually start games, right? Who is the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos? Who is the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers? Cam Newton hurt. When you have this many injuries to pro bowlers, former MVPs, Super Bowl winning quarterbacks, and Kaepernick, who hasn't failed a workout, hasn't gotten a workout. Isn't this the kind of high-profile situation where, quite frankly, the league shouldn't be saying no cameras? The league shouldn't be coupling that by saying, hey, press, you got to see this from several feet away. We're not even going to allow reporters to be down by the workout. Don't they allow that at the uh, combine in the draft? Aren't observers actually in the arena looking at guys? Don't you know the 40 times of college players who are working out, what they did at the Combine, how they threw at the Combine? Isn't there film of the workouts? Can't you look at NFL Network, the league-owned network? 
Can't you look at NFL Network and actually see the workouts? Why hide the ball here? Let's talk about Miles Garrett. The league's making other mistakes. I'm sure many people watching this video are completely appalled. Completely appalled by the idea of a player trying to take off an opponent's helmet. Right? The helmet's there for a reason. These are big men who could inflict a lot of damage. Right? A player who tries to take off his opponent's helmet because he's upset should be suspended a number of games. That's why I'm absolutely dumbfounded dumbfounded that Mason Rudolph, who tried to take off Miles Garrett's helmet, folks, that's the first person who tried to take off anyone's helmet at the end of that Cleveland-Pittsburgh game. It's Mason Rudolph who tries to take off Garrett's helmet. Right now, if he's not going to get suspended for that, Right, if, if the act of reaching to take off an opponent's helmet isn't worthy, according to the NFL, isn't worthy of losing playing time, then how do we get to the point where Garrett, same intent, after having someone try to take off his helmet, Garrett decides, okay, I'm going to defend myself. He takes off Rudolph's helmet. Folks, it's the same intent. Rudolph tried to take off Garrett's helmet, was unsuccessful. Garrett takes off Rudolph's helmet, is successful. Folks, it's the same intent. It's the same attempt to take off the guy's helmet. Right? The same attempt. So I'm sorry. If the league is going to tell me that attempting to take off an opponent's helmet doesn't warrant a suspension, then I don't understand how they could suspend Miles Garrett for the rest of the year. Granted, Garrett succeeds in taking off the helmet, Garrett swings it at Rudolph, and hits Rudolph in the head with the helmet. Okay. Okay. Agreed. That's a battery. All right. Garrett deserves some level of suspension. But so too does Rudolph. Right? So, so too does Rudolph. Understand too, the league hasn't had problems in the past with either guy. So there's no reason for them to come down hard on one side of the ledger. Let me also say this too. They interview Baker Mayfield right after the incident takes place. And Baker basically says, yeah, Miles messed up. Uh, this is unfortunate. It's going to hurt our team. Right? You know, I'm still waiting for the interview of the Pittsburgh Steeler teammate who actually comments on how Mason Rudolph's attempt to take off Miles Garrett's helmet. By the way, that's what starts the whole thing. Right? That's what starts the whole thing. Where's the interview with the Pittsburgh player who says, yeah, Mason Rudolph messed up. Our starting quarterback is hurting our team by jeopardizing his ability to play. We might have to go with the third string guy. How can our starting quarterback do something this stupid? Let me go one step further. In the following interviews, Mason Rudolph has the audacity after trying to take off Miles Garrett's helmet to call Garrett a coward. Now to me the league has one of two ways to deal with this. It can suspend Rudolph for a number of games. Right? Say, hey, we don't like the idea of taking off an opponent's helmet or even attempting to do so. If we're going to suspend Garrett five games, six games, rest of the season, then we're going to suspend Rudolph for at least half that amount. Right? The league can go that route. Or the league can reduce Garrett's 
suspension. Let me also say too that I hope when Garrett meets with the league later today the NFL Players Association does a better job than they've done representing Colin Kaepernick's interest. Where is the NFL Players Association representative who's out there educating the public that the players under the collective bargaining agreement have the right to kneel during the anthem? Understand, dozens of players have knelt during the anthem. Even the owners, Jerry Jones, Shot Khan, um, you know, knelt or held hands with players during the uh, during the anthem because they know, they know that this is actually a negotiated point in the CBA, right? So you have Colin Kaepernick exercising his contractual rights. The rights the league has agreed upon with his union. And because he's done so, the teams haven't given him a tryout. Folks, it's out. <laughs> it's, it's simply outrageous. Let me also say this too. Isn't it interesting that on the front end, I was hearing that Hugh Jackson and Joe Philbin were going to run the workout, but yet the league, after showing me the NFL combine, right after me being able to see countless guys throw at the combine, the league wanted me to know who was running this workout but didn't want me, an NFL fan, to be able to see the workout. How ridiculous is that? Right, let me close by saying, you know, I don't know. Jeff Nally, Kaepernick's agent. I can tell you, years ago, the only involvement I've had with Jeff Nally, right, who's had absolutely no input into this video. The only involvement I've had was a woman came to me it was a child support issue involving a Jeff Nally client. I've never spoken to Jeff Nally. I did contact his office, and that woman did get a settlement. So if you want to call that bias, you know, whatever. Right? She got a payout, rather. We'll, we'll, we'll put it that way. If you want to call that bias, whatever. Just understand, the league's mismanaged the Kaepernick and the Miles Garrett situations, in my opinion. Right? I'm a big fan of the NFL. I want the NFL to succeed, to continue to succeed on a major level. But even good organizations handle things the wrong way. Right? I'm hoping the NFL backtracks a little bit. I'm hoping some of these teams with playoff aspirations that are looking at their quarterback situation and who feel that you know, having Delvin Hodges as your backup to Mason Rudolph might not be enough to get past the Ravens in the playoffs, right? I'm, I'm hoping some of these teams realize that at quarterback, they're a little bit thin and they need a little bit of help, right? I'm not saying that an NFL team is obligated to give Colin Kaepernick a job, but gee, don't you think he should at least be able to get a tryout? Just ask yourself the simple question. Do you believe that these NFL teams have given quarterbacks with a thinner resume than Colin Kaepernick, who, by the way, has been to multiple conference title games and who made it to a Super Bowl, <laughs> right? Beat Green Bay in the playoffs in Green Bay. Right? Don't you think that guys with less of a resume than Cop Colin Kaepernick, who are less of an athlete than Colin Kaepernick, especially given the trend toward running quarterbacks, right? Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray, right? Given the focus on mobility now in the league, 
isn't it obvious here that Kaepernick is being excluded, blackballed, from workouts for reasons other than his ability to play football. And when you realize that the reason Kaepernick's being excluded is actually something that was negotiated by his union with the NFL, and that Kaepernick actually has rights under that CBA, right? The same rights that Eric Reed has, and Eric Reed got signed. Right? The same rights that led to the NFL itself settling Kaepernick's earlier claims. <laughs> right? When you realize that that's the reality, folks, you have issues here. As NFL fans, we should be outraged by all of this. At Roger Goodell's next interview, let's hope the press, instead of wasting time saying Kaepernick doesn't want to play in the NFL, rather than making stuff up like that, right, for a guy who's been working out for 32 months and looked good at his workout, right, on my Twitter, I've actually tweeted the workout. He looked good in the workout. Rather than going that route, why doesn't the press ask Goodell, do the players under the CBA have the right to kneel during the anthem? Isn't this something isn't this a loophole that your negotiators, your league negotiators, left in the CBA? Right? If Delvin Hodges has gotten, you know, tryouts with teams, why hasn't Colin Kaepernick? Do you feel that Delvin Hodges, who started a game this year, by the way, for the Steelers when Rudolph was hurt, do you feel that Delvin Hodges has a better resume and more ability? than Colin Kaepernick. Why was Kaepernick given such a short window of time to accept this workout offer? Why was the press supposed to be far away from the workout? Why was there an attempt to prevent this workout from being filmed, even by Kaepernick's people? Understand, Kaepernick's people have a vested interest in filming the workout. This way, when they contact the New York Giants or some other team, they can give a multimedia presentation. They can say, hey, we'd like a workout with you. Here's what Kaepernick looks like today. Right here, Here's a current workout of our athlete. We'd like for him to work out with your team. Why did the league not want any of that? And why did the league ask him, after one lawsuit that left open the possibility for other lawsuits, why did the league ask him to sign a waiver for the workout? That's what needs to happen. Journalists be journalists. Right? Talk with the players and ask the hard questions. Instead, we're hearing about Kaepernick shirt and stuff like that. Anyway, I've got to go. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks.